Hi, I'm Leon Dailani. I study natural sciences at Jesus College Cambridge, and you're watching Getting Personal with Team Upside. So for me, the most difficult part of the process was definitely identifying the structure of the personal statement that I wanted to write. I think most recommendations um, to begin writing a personal statement begin with outlining all your accomplishments or things that you'd like to um, note and indicate to your university. So you produce a list of, I attended this summer school, or I did this wedding participation program, or this is a practical example of my knowledge. I think that's all fine and well, but integrating it into a structure, a personal statement, how to relate each one, how to correspond each one with a skill of yours and how it associates with the program that you're applying to, I found quite difficult. Nice. So it's, nice. it's essentially just initially getting to writing the personal statement and putting words to paper. I think definitely the UCAS coordinator at my sixth form assisted me considerably. Uh, my initial drafts were quite verbose. Uh, I was quite concerned about it coming off repetitive and stale um, to the admissions uh, person, the admissions officer at the university. So I think I overloaded it uh, on the Fiasaurus front. I found it beneficial when my UCAS coordinator just put everything in perspective in terms of you're just trying to convey yourself as an individual and what did not, yeah, not necessarily what distinguishes you as a person, because they're going to get an influx of personal statements and it's going to be very difficult for you to create a memori uh, a personal statement that's considerably memorable to them considering it is their job to just read through a tremendous amount but i think just convey that you have the necessary qualifications and credentials and that you're a person that's you know naturally inclined to take the subject in as comprehensive and intelligible way as possible. So going back to what I initially said about outlining all the accomplishments, achievements and practical experience that you've obtained throughout the years, um, I sort of group them together in terms of what's related and what can easily flow from the next. You don't want to have massive discontinuities within one paragraph, right? Where you're talking about one thing and then suddenly there's like a drastic transformation that isn't really connected, right? So I grouped things together and then assigned um, each grouping a paragraph. Um, make sure you, you know, discuss why you're taking the subject in particular, why you've chosen that program, and then reinforce that reasoning with the actual accomplishments and examples that you have. So my personal statement, I say, you know, I really enjoy physics because of this reason. I, I applied to physics. Um, Cambridge it was natural sciences, but everywhere else I applied to physics. So, you know, you discuss why you like physics or why you want to study physics in the like preliminary paragraph. And then you reinforce that and substantiate what you've said with uh, the concrete examples that you've attained. Paragraph, I want to do physics because of this reason, you know, I'm and then like next paragraph, I'm adept because so-and-so, you know, it's reinforced by so-and-so. I, I, I mean, the main, objective I feel like is just make sure that you have a, a flow when you're when you're providing evidence for your interest in the programs. So um, I was fortunate enough to be able to do an EPQ so that uh, really provided like the groundwork and foundation for a lot of the things that I mentioned in my personal statement and it was physics related. So what I like to do is really interweave and sort of intertwine my examples into my personal statement and have it be like a, a witty association. So I say, you know, in this book, I read so-and-so and like this relates to my ability because, because I'm inter uh, like inquisitive. So I'll give an example. I read here like a book called The Fabric of Reality, right? And it's more like a philosophically oriented book about how science and scientific method requires continuous questioning and like questioning assumptions and that sort of thing. I go, yeah, this relates to my own personal attitude towards the world where I'm like, I, I interrogate everything. I don't uh, take things for granted in terms of knowledge I come across. I really try and identify like the foundational axioms that they're premised on and whether those are solid for the rest of the conclusions that we draw, right? And these are like critical principles to the study of physics and science in general. So what I did is I identified this concept that's present in the book, 
or that's present in like a practical work environment that I found. And then I related it back to my own um, personality or demeanor. There's a, there's a thing in physics called the uh, Feynman path integral, where essentially you just like consider all the po possible routes for evolution of a system, of a quantum system, right? So you have to consider all the possibilities. And then I related it back to myself. It's like, in the same way that this path integral considers all the possibilities of evolution of a quantum system, I'm the same in which I consider all possible scenarios. You know, I'm very like inquisitive, curious, diligent, um, organized in that regard where I'm meticulous about, about consideration of like an equation or a solution or a problem. Don't be too concerned about inflating it with jargon and terminology um, you can still write down all your accomplishments you can still make a really convincing personal statement in the absence of that in fact the best written literature um, you know in the world just in history as a general principle it's it's not necessarily the literature that has the biggest words it definitely isn't it's the one that conveys like the most content and the most uh, you know it resonates with its readers in a way in which they can understand it and relate. So mm -hmm. if you're an admissions officer, you don't want something that makes that gives you a headache. I mean, I don't really see this as an issue in the science. I, th I think this question is like predominantly designed for a humanities yeah. personal statement, yeah. because in science, you gain the theory through practical um, endeavors, right? Mm -hmm. I'm knowledgeable of this underlying theory because I did this summer school or I read this article or um, so or I like I did this experiment right uh, honestly I think they should just be in tandem when you write about it um, yes definitely I think definitely demonstrate your I don't think you should definitely not just be writing about theory or I enjoy this and this theory or I enjoy you know um this concept that I've learned, state something that you've done and the theory associated with that action mm -hmm. or whatever experiment you've conducted or whatever some school or participation program you've engaged in and then relate that to the theory. Yeah. So they should both come in conjunction when you're writing the personal statement. You shouldn't, you should definitely not be talking about either one in isolation. I think I wrote around four drafts. Um, Again, so I was giving it back to my UCAS coordinator in my sixth form. So as I was saying, I really struggle with uh, verbosity, um, just like excess terminology and bloat at the beginning of my, my initial draft and of my personal statement. So an example of that is just, um, I investigated the ontological repercussions of deterministic causality in Kant and its parallels to the idea of a many-world you know, multiverse. <laughs> I don't know what that means now, but <laughs> sounds pretty. <laughs> That's like the Leo thing to do. Like, if you're an admissions officer reading that, you're just like, this, what is this kid on about? <laughs> make sure it's understandable. You know, make sure in like three years, you can look back at your personal statement and actually understand what you're trying to, trying to say. <laughs>